I didn't want to talk about the Manchester attack right away because I try to avoid speculation. I try to avoid overreaching with my comments. It's important to me to wait for facts to become available. It's important to me to withhold judgment of any given situation until we have the necessary information to make a judgment. But what's frustrating about these incidents is they are, for all practical purposes, beyond that protocol. If you made a video immediately after this attack, speculating entirely about what happened, you probably could have pegged it. You could have predicted the method. A male suicide bomber used a sophisticated improvised explosive. You could have predicted the suspect. He's been identified by officials as 22-year-old Salman Abedi, Manchester-born, of Libyan descent. A U.S. intelligence official tells NBC News Abadi likely received training abroad by a terrorist group. You could have predicted the allegiances unknown media narrative. But his allegiances are unclear. Despite plenty of circumstantial evidence provided by those same media outlets, evidence you could have predicted. Much of the investigation is focused on this neighborhood, just a few miles south of the arena. And this area could be key because several people from here have traveled to the Middle East to join ISIS. You could have predicted the celebrity wisdom to follow. The greatest thing we can do is just unite and love on each other and like no barriers, no borders. Like it, it, we're, we all need to just coexist. You could have predicted the lamenting of possible forthcoming Islamophobia. And notably, Manchester did not vote in favor of Brexit, but an attack like this, as you said, is much bigger than Manchester itself and will likely create backlash, depending, of course, on the details of this attack. You could have predicted the punditry about how, despite the accuracy of all of your predictions, there's not much we can do to stop this type of barbarism. It's just something we all have to get used to. Europe is getting used to attacks like this, Mika. We have to, uh, because we are never going to be able to totally wipe this out. As ISIS gets squeezed in Syria and Iraq, we're going to see more of these kinds of attacks play taking place in Europe, and Europe is starting to get used to that. As if what happened to the 22 dead, including young women and girls, who will never realize their potential, whose families will never see their weddings, never see their children, never see their academic or professional development, whose lives will forever fit within the context of what could have been rather than what will be, as well as the 50 plus hurt, many with life altering or still life threatening injuries, as if that tragedy wasn't tragic enough for you. Add to it that layer of predictability, the fact that our culprit was known to police the fact that he came from a known neighborhood of trouble, and the fact that his motive fits the script of a movie we've seen countless times before. And what you have is a tragedy that is both clear in cause and theoretically preventable, because what's predictable is preventable. But it's only preventable when you acknowledge that predictability, when you acknowledge that there's a pattern here, when you acknowledge that the sole cause for this needless carnage is a global ideology bent on the destruction of Western values and society, and that the blame for this tragedy rests upon that ideology alone. When you acknowledge there is nothing you can do to appease this ideology other than total submission, and even then your punishment is likely death. But we still have a large group of political, media, and celebrity elite who refuse to acknowledge that reality, who refuse to take a critical look at the source of the problem and instead insist that this problem would go away if we would all just be nicer. That when we are attacked in horrific ways, there's probably some role that we played in prompting it to happen. That if we all just open our doors a little bit wider and if we just hug the threat a little bit tighter, then peace and harmony will be achieved with those who will accept nothing short of our destruction and are willing to kill and die for it. And we keep trying this failed approach, insisting it will work, even when the cost of hugging our enemies is hugs we lose with our loved ones needlessly taken. It's that outlook that has me really frustrated as it does in the aftermath of every one of these attacks, specifically as articulated by Connecticut Senator Chris Murphy, 
who had this to say on CNN with Wolf Blitzer. Yeah, I think we have to learn some lessons from Europe. The fact of the matter is, in many countries in Europe, England included, Muslims uh, suffer a de facto segregation, which sometimes allows for these perversions of Islam, this radicalization to take root. Uh, and we have to make sure that we don't allow that to happen here. <sighs> Islam does not suffer segregation. Islam wants segregation. Islam does not want to integrate. It wants to dominate. It wants to overtake. Do you really think the segregation observed in the Islamic communities of Manchester and beyond is because of oppressive English design? Or is it because Islam wants a concentrated presence in which its values, in which its culture, in which its laws can dominate. This behavior is not a perversion of Islam. This authoritarian concentration of influence and power is present everywhere Islamic ideology holds a majority. What's happening in Manchester is not a case of Islam desperately trying to integrate into Western culture, but being rejected by those mean British people. This is a case of an ideology concentrating power, as it does everywhere so that it can impose that power upon those who do not conform. This is not some unfortunate fate suffered against the will of the believers. This is the intent of the believers. All I know is that uh, ISIS uh, has designs on bringing the fight to us here in the United States, which is why we have got to complement this military strategy with increased uh, intelligence, uh, increased intelligence sharing with Europe, and a commitment to try to stop giving ISIS recruiters um, recruitment fodder. Uh, and so many of us are worried about some of the rhetoric of the Trump administration because we worry that that combined with robust online recruitment might end up in an attack like this happening in the United States. This is such a brief clip, but it illustrates this common worldview that if left unchecked, or maybe if left unslapped across the face, will continue to look the other way. When a gay bar gets shot up, when a truck drives down the street of a French celebration, when young women are maimed after enjoying a concert. Ooh, we better tone down our rhetoric. We better not use mean words because that will just recruit more terrorists and bring more violence. Aside from being just pathetically submissive, this reasoning is counter to both basic moral principle and observable data points. Just in terms of ethics, if people are motivated to terrorist action, because of political rhetoric, if they are motivated to violence because of words, then that is their problem and cooler heads are under no obligation to appease them. Islam is a religion of peace, but it's really important that we don't upset fragile Muslim sensibilities or they become dangerously violent. That is a condemnation of Islamic morality not Western morality. And even if we do make a conscious effort to be really, really nice when talking about Islam, would it matter? We had an eight-year presidency of a guy who would not use the term radical Islamic terror. What I have been careful about when I describe these issues is to make sure that we do not lump these murders into the billion Muslims that exist around the world, including in this country. And funny, despite those very kind words, militant Islam had a pretty good run in that time frame, recruiting and taking territory at a very healthy pace. We have European leaders cutting in line to bend over for Islamic migrants. These European countries could not be more hospitable. And yet the Manchester attack is only the fourth deadliest Islamic attack in Western Europe, inside an 18-month window. So, Senator Murphy, is it that Angela Merkel and the EU and the rest of Europe that is kind and welcoming beyond all reasonable expectation? Is it that they too are insufficiently respectful with their words about Islam? Is that why Islamic militants keep savagely slaughtering European people? Pick one of two answers, Senator. Either you're willing to say that Europeans are insufficiently kind, to which I'd ask if they aren't kind enough, what hope do we as Americans have to reach the heights of courtesy necessary to quell Islamic terror? Or you could choose the answer that is abundantly clear to me 
and many other Americans and Westerners that there is no such kindness that will defeat this intolerable problem. That kindness does not work with an ideological enemy whose aim is not cooperation with you, but destruction of you. Until we reject this Islamized Stockholm Syndrome that keeps insisting there are things we need to fix about ourselves before standing up to this existential threat against our values and our way of life, this tragedy will continue. And we'll have to look at the next tragedy and say, huh, it's a lot like the last one, and the one before that, and the one before that. If it's predictable, it is preventable. All that's necessary is honesty about the factors that make it predictable. So call us racist, call us Islamophobic, call us bigoted, call us whatever you like. If it means the young women who just want to enjoy some live music get home safely at night, we are happy to be your buzzword punching bag. What a dream to have leaders in politics and media who could display such courage. The courage to stand up for children in the face of mean and scary name calling. Dream on and say what you will about them. The one thing you can't call them is racist. And I guess despite all the horror we see, that's the one thing that matters. So congratulations on your virtue, Senator. I hope it campaigns well. Thanks, as always, for listening and for supporting this channel. Always appreciate that thoughtful discussion down below and especially over on Twitter. That is at ML Christensen. You're always welcome to come hang out and chat in my live streams. Those are linked down in the description. Looking forward to it. Okay, bye.